Over the course of two weeks, we filmed Bruno when he was left home alone. Sometimes he was confined to the kitchen. On other occasions, he was given the run of the house. I've asked Dr Emily Blackwell, a leading dog behaviourist, to analyse the footage and we're going to show it to Alicia. So this is where you went out when he wasn't expecting you to go. He's got a hell of a voice on him, <laughs> Bruno. Inside that very big dog is a very small dog yeah, who that. kind of He's needs his mum. He is. He needs his mum. Bruno has a set pacing routine, taking in the hall first, then the sitting room, then the kitchen, then back to the front door before starting again. Oh, it's just he can't relax, can he? Love him. It's, I mean, if he's doing that all day, he must be exhausted. He doesn't ever eat when he's left mm. alone, does he? It's, that's quite typical. Bruno is never left longer than three hours. He goes for three walks a day, yet within minutes of Alicia leaving, he's defecated. Just how quick, you, like the toileting, it's obviously, it's, it's like anxiety, isn't it, straight away. I just, I just can't believe it was just so quick, he just went to the toilet, like, you know, and he'd been out just before and, yeah. Is that what you imagined was going on? Um, I know, I know he's been hiding because people have told me, but it's just different seeing it. It's not nice and just like how he's chewing the door, it's like really trying to get out and get back to me or what, I don't know what, you know. I mean, I think the big thing to take away from this is actually this is treatable. OK, yeah. It, which is That's important. really good to know. OK. Yeah. So what we need to do is, is approach it in two main ways. The first way is to try and make him a bit less dependent on your attention so that he's happy being left on his own eventually. Okay. And the second part is to change his perception of being left alone because at the moment, to him, it's the worst thing in the world. And what we want to do is actually teach him that you're going to come back and he doesn't need to get anxious okay. or worry about it. Yeah. It is, it is <laughs> tough. Yeah. It's going to be tough. But we're here to support you. We're at the end of the phone. We're going to come round here all the time, okay. see how you're getting on. Make sure you're doing everything yeah. right oh, and, yeah. and hopefully make Bruno happy. Good. Yeah. You'll be sick of the sight of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot riding on his treatment. If Bruno doesn't get better, Alicia may have no choice but to give him back to the rescue centre, where he'll face an uncertain future. We're going to be following Bruno to see how his treatment goes. When I was a vet in practice, treating behaviour problems in dogs was more of an art than a science. But today, cutting-edge research is now being used to investigate what dogs with separation problems are thinking and feeling. I'm taking the video evidence we've gathered to Professor Daniel Mills at the University of Lincoln, who's delving into their minds. Bruno suffers from separation-related um, problem. What we're trying to work out is which emotions are underpinning the, the signs that he's showing. What we see is that, you know, there's at least two different emotions that seem to be involved. For example, the howling and things like that suggest the fundamental emotion of attachment, like the attachment a child has to its mother, uh, may be playing a part. But also, frustration is playing a role. Professor Mills wants to take a look at the thermal imaging footage. 
Researchers found that the temperature of dogs' ears is an indicator of their brain activity. The footage could help us see what's going on in Bruno's head. So the brighter areas, uh, like here, um, that's quite hot, whereas the surrounding environment you can see is quite, quite dark. A lot of activity in relation to unpleasant events are processed by the right side of the brain, and as that side of the brain gets more active, so we see more heat. What we're interested in is whether or not there are differences. You can see that the right ear is warmer than the left ear. And that's consistent with him being more distressed. So it fits the theory that actually the right side of the brain in dogs is associated with negative emotions. Would you still get that side of the brain lighting up if it was frustration? That's one of the things, places we want to go with this technology is actually to look to see in the cases of frustration whether or not you see right or left activity. Oop, yeah, he's turning his head. Something's coming towards the door. And what's interesting is, see how this ear has started to heat up? Now, this could well be, this is, you can actually see it change now, this ear. So, it's something positive that's happening. Tail suggests it's yeah. positive. Yeah, <laughs> that's, tr that's certainly true. <laughs> but we're seeing actually the shift. Yeah, and those are the owners, those are the owners coming back. So, where does this take us? I mean, this is the very early stages of, of what is at the moment a research technique. So understanding the underlying neuroscience really helps us develop our treatment programs so that they can be more specific for a particular case. Analysing our footage has allowed the scientists to get inside Bruno's head and they now know he experiences a toxic mixture of fear, frustration and panic whenever Alicia and Eby leave him. Dr Emily Blackwell has prescribed a tailor-made course of treatment to help him learn to be happy on his own. First, he's taught to relax. He's given a new dog toy called a Kong. It's stuffed with treats. OK, so we need a way of showing Bruno that this is different from when you go out to work and he becomes anxious. Okay. And we need some kind of signal for that. And what we often use is a different mat or bed that the dog hasn't seen before. Okay. Do you have anything like that, Alicia? That's perfect. Thanks, Thank Alicia. You. And what we're going to do is just let Bruno see this, put it down on the floor. This? Give him his tasty Kong. This? This? Oh, this? We're going to have a new word that you say, so something like, relax, Bruno. Relax, Bruno. Give him his Kong. Good boy. And then you just sit there. We don't want you petting him at this stage, just okay. sitting there so you're there. He doesn't have to worry. He sees the black mat and, brilliant, that means Kong time. Yeah. For how long a time should like to sit? To begin you know. with the relaxation training, just the whole time it takes him to eat his cold. Okay. You just sit next to him. The next stage involves Elisha gradually moving away from him. What we'll get you to do is literally one step away and then back to him again. Okay. And then if you've done that a number of times and you're 100% confident that he's happy, just two steps away. Okay? And then back to him. Bruno is one of eight.